A terrorist attack has stunned the world. Brutal flooding has devastated the lives of millions. A destructive stock decrease has wiped out jobs. Poverty rates have skyrocketed across the country. Climate change is becoming seemingly unstoppable. A huge crime rate increase. Political polarization has reached all-time highs. Possibly the first signs of extraterrestrial life. Tax, Tax rises, rises seem inevitable, inevitable riots, riots and, and protests, protests out, in out in force cuts, cuts to the healthcare, healthcare budget, budget, lower grades, grades than, than ever before. before. Trust, Trust in, the in the media has fallen. Has fallen. Economy, Economy is, is entering, entering a recession. recession. Believe it or not, dear viewer, I was young once. I remember when I was in college and one of my teachers, this annoying lady, always used to nag at how information was so accessible for us now. She always used to say how, back in her day, she had to go to public libraries and find the exact specific book for the topic she wanted to learn about. Whereas now, we just have the internet. And she would always tell us how we were spoiled. Spoiled, I tell ya. At the time, I always just used to find it annoying, but a decade later, and I can't help but admit that she might have been onto something. We do have access to information, endless amounts of information, and this, in many ways, is amazing. I can open up my search engine of choice and learn about practically any topic I desire for hours on end. But this access to information is both a blessing and a curse, because while I can learn about things that will improve my life and be useful, I can also be inundated with stories that will only serve to ultimately depress and demotivate me. Before the internet, if people wanted to know what was going on in the world, they'd sit around the television and watch the news for an hour every night, likely while having dinner. But given there being just an hour time slot, there was never really enough time to truly explain everything that was actually going on in the world. And even then, most news stations would naturally prioritise the national over the international, as it was that of which was more relevant. Everyone, not by choice, but by circumstance, thus lived in a bubble of limitation, never truly knowing precisely what was actually going on. But now, so long as you have an internet connection, you can know precisely what's going on, anywhere and everywhere, and even sometimes, see it in real time. You can witness riots in nations of which you've never even stepped foot. Controversies in religions that you've never even met a worshipper of. Drama within landscapes that you've never even had to apply. Take Twitter, for example. A quick scroll of the Twitter timeline can have you embark on a global adventure finding out story after story, opinion after opinion, and fact after fact. But here's the thing. I did a poll on Twitter where I asked you all, does browsing your Twitter timeline on average make you more happy or sad? In response, a minority of 44% of people said it made them more happy, with a majority of 56% saying that it made them more sad. And this majority of sadness doesn't exactly surprise me. In fact, it's exactly why I decided to make the poll, and subsequently this production, in the first place. Because I noticed that using Twitter, and the wider internet at large, more often than not, depresses me. And perhaps with good reason. One of the first things you learn in business is that people are much more likely to leave a negative review over a really bad experience than a positive review over a really good one. If you go to a restaurant and have a true fine dining experience, then you might give them a 5 star review, if you're feeling generous. But if you went to a restaurant and found a fly in your soup, then you bet that they're going to get a very stern 1 star review. This is because humans have an innate psychological tendency known as the negativity bias, whereby negative events tend to affect us much more than positive ones. Ever wondered why the seven deadly sins are more well known than the seven heavenly virtues? Because sin fascinates us much more than virtue. It's even the very basis for entire genres of entertainment, such as true crime or reality TV drama. Negativity gets our attention, and social media thrives on such attention. Clicks, likes, and subscriptions. 
Anything that drives eyes towards something, for it all runs on an underlying advertisement model, which generates wealth based not on quality, but quantity. A financial model which has lifted many people into wealth, but also has the psychological burden lingering in the background, that the masses are almost guaranteed to be algorithmically manipulated into being shown information that they are specifically more likely to respond to. Information that is more often than not, negative. And this brutal combination of the blessing of unlimited information and the natural human bias towards negativity concludes in a world where people can now be so unbelievably more informed than at any other time in history, but also more warped as a result in tandem. For human beings, we're simply not designed to know everything and anything all of the time, and it's screwing us up. Like a one terabyte hard drive faced with the prospect of trying to absorb 10 terabytes of data, it's just not going to happen. We can now, for lack of a better term, suffer from a severe case of information overload. And while everyone is technically susceptible to information overload, it is nevertheless a minority of people who actually feel it. The reason being that in order to become overloaded in the first place, one would require three premier traits. First, curiosity, having a motivational thirst for knowledge. Second, time, actually being able to spend their life gaining such knowledge. And third, intelligence, having the ability to frame narratives around such garnered knowledge. And if there's three things that most people in the modern world don't have, it's the combination of curiosity, time, and intelligence. But for those who do, such as the rare intelligent neat, they especially have the potential to slowly meld into a phenomenon that people have started referring to as the Duma. A negative personality that as a result of being overloaded, rotates between the contents of a cauldron of horrific emotions. They can sometimes feel responsible, as if the weight of the world rests on their shoulders alone, resulting in them feeling an immense amount of stress over issues that are far beyond their pay grade. They can sometimes feel paranoid, trusting no one and always pessimistically expecting the worst case scenario, resulting in them becoming paralyzed in a state of inactivity, which often only makes their life worse, further feeding into seemingly justifying their paranoia. They can sometimes feel angry, living life in a subtle sea of rage, arguments and spats, resulting in them becoming isolated from their family, friends, or those who they would have otherwise been close to, for seemingly no reason. Or, more commonly, the passive state that gives them their namesake, they can just become depressive. Unable to handle the events that have been laid out before them, resulting in them becoming bogged down within a dark cloud of nihilism. But whatever the feeling, one trait remains constant, and that's that Doomers have all forgotten how to love life. Often found retreating into virtual think tanks filled with other like-minded individuals who back up each other's illusions. Whether it be Reddit communities, 4chan boards, Discord servers, or other such online spaces, inside they mutually wallow in a sea of negativity. Reprogramming their mind to slowly forget the big picture, that while there is indeed much darkness in the world, there is also a lot of light. And little do they know that if you forget the latter and only focus on the former, then you're toast. Throughout my time online, I have encountered numerous such doomers, and each time I am heartbroken. Not because of how needlessly negative they can often be, but because I imagine what kind of person they could be if only they conquered how to handle being overloaded. So let's say you're a doomer. You spend 12 hours a day overloading yourself by reading depressing tales online before helplessly crying yourself to sleep every night. What should you do? Simple. A little thing that I like to call the B Mindset. Bees, within their nests, all have their own jobs, and from them individually doing such jobs, they collectively come together to form a functioning colony. And human beings, despite obviously being much more complex, are practically no different. We are all individuals who have our own designated interests, who work together to form our societies. 
The point being to remember the fact that while you ultimately belong to a collective, you are also, at the end of the day, just an individual within it. That doesn't mean you should be a disposable, hiding from not caring or not having an opinion on important societal issues, but merely recognising that that truly is what such issues are. Societal issues, not personal ones. And that ultimately, it's up to every one of us to try to fix the greater problems of our time, together. That is the B Mindset. So let's go through each one of the Doomer's symptoms again and see how applying the B Mindset takes a sledgehammer to all of them. First, this feeling of being responsible. As we've already established, bees work up to build their hives collectively. No one bee, not even the queen bee, is wholly responsible for the hive as a whole. They merely all have their roles to play, and work together as such. And this logic likewise works with humans too. There's very little merit in keeping up at night over another nation's affairs, over colossal planetary issues like climate change, or social issues that affect millions if not billions of people. As feeling responsibility over struggles that are ultimately a group effort is nothing more than a one-way ticket to madness. And from such madness, you don't often actually make such problems better, but only needlessly destroy yourself in the process. The truth is that even the most influential people throughout history, the legends, those credited with changing the world, didn't actually change it on their own. For without their army, their efforts would have amounted to naught. The fate of the world never truly rests on the shoulders of one person and one person alone, and you should never delude yourself into thinking that it does. So if you do, give yourself a bit of a break. You're a bee, not the hive. Second, this feeling of paranoia. When overloaded with negativity, you can start to feel like there are enemies everywhere, and that you personally are always in their crosshairs, leading you to trust no one and always look behind your back. But when you accept the fact that you aren't responsible for everything, you also start to view yourself with less importance. Not in a masochistic self-hating way, but in a soothing, calm way. As the reality of how you probably don't have a federally assigned agent whose sole job it is to surveil and sabotage you also starts to kick in in tandem. Most people are asleep, but some people are so awake that they've started hallucinating. And if you're one of them, it's time to chill. As in all likelihood, there's probably no unique reason for you, as an individual, to be paranoid, as you probably aren't as important as you think you are. For again, you're a bee, not the hive. Third, this feeling of anger. If one accepts the premise that, like the bee, we are collectively minded creatures, then one must also accept the importance of having the company of others. It is, after all, the reason why such doomers often seek out other doomers online, to get a collective confirmation that they are acting in a way that is justified. But by being angry to those who don't share your gloomy outlook due to external factors weighing you down, you are ironically only making yourself needlessly isolated. The truth is that even if the threats you view as legitimate are actively hostile, then you would have no chance to defeat them anyway without other people. So why isolate yourself from productive people needlessly when you could be building up a personal army of support? As true strength comes in numbers. For again, you're a bee, not the hive. And last but not least, this feeling of being depressive. The human being is a finely crafted specimen, and all the emotions we feel have a fundamental purpose to help us survive and thrive. Feeling sad may feel bad, but one feels that way for a reason. Motivation. More specifically, the motivation to change out of a negative situation. But if one interlinks their mood with not that of which they can change, but that of which is outside their control, then they are conceding their emotional management completely to other people. But by remembering the fact that such group issues are beyond you alone, and rekindling such emotional management to be primarily linked to what you can change, such as your own life, 
then such depressive ways will suddenly start to cease. As, one more time, you're a bee, not the hive. All in all then, if you're a self-admitted doomer who always allows yourself to be constantly overloaded by what you willingly consume on the internet, then you need to stop. Because yes, there are problems, big problems, but there's no problem bigger than wasting your life on needless negativity. Many doomers are just in a temporary slump, whereas others, the more serious cases, find themselves using the collective problems of society as a justifiable reason to forget their own individual inadequacies and how they are too cowardly to change them. But whatever the severity, one thing's for certain, when you're on your deathbed, you won't be proud of how many hours you spent trawling the internet in search of things that intentionally get you down. You'll be wondering why you wasted your life, of which you only had one shot, in such a foul state. For life is a truly precious gift, and with every second that passes, you lose more of it. So don't waste it.